A 39-year-old man was referred to our center due to advanced heart failure with biventricular dysfunction. He had no previous history and no family history of any disease. When he arrived, he was on the butamine infusion. The clinical scenario was, of course, of heart failure, but what we found was that he had a peculiar skin pigmentation with a bronze coloration. We performed an echocardiogram, we confirmed the severe biventricular dysfunction, but we also saw that the right ventricle was more dilated and compromised than the left. Pulmonary embolism and coronary artery disease had already been excluded in the other center. So to be honest, at this stage, we did not have a very clear idea in mind, but we were thinking about arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, inflammatory or infiltrative cardiomyopathies. We proceeded step by step with routine examinations. In the laboratory tests, we found that the patient had impaired fasting glucose, but in particular, he had very high levels of serum ferritin concentration and transferrin saturation. So brown skin pigmentation, impaired fasting glucose, and high levels of iron, they were all suggesting hemochromatosis. In order to confirm the diagnosis, considering the overall conditions of the patient, we preferred a non-invasive approach, and we performed cardiac magnetic resonance. Magnetic resonance in these cases may be a great tool because you can perform a selective protocol focused only on iron overload assessment, so very fast and with no contrast medium. We studied T2 star relaxation time and T1 mapping, and we confirmed that the patient had severe iron accumulation both in the liver and in the heart. And just by looking at the images, you can see that the liver and the heart appear very up intense, and that in T1 mapping sequences, the myocardium is black. Genetic testing then confirmed our diagnosis of hereditary hemochromatosis. We immediately started a specific therapy with iron chelation with an intensive protocol. We started with intravenous continuous infusion of deferoxamine and after one week we added oral deferipron. The therapy was highly effective and in six months the patient completely recovered cardiac function. In the magnetic resonance there was complete resolution of iron overload. So to sum up, please remember that hemochromatosis may be a potentially reversible cause of heart failure, so don't miss the diagnosis. And to stress it again, magnetic resonance is a great tool for diagnosis and follow-up of patients with iron overload complications.